Thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to share some details about the Minority to Jews of Illinois Scholarship, which is actually led by the Illinois Student Assistance Commission. But we're here to tell you a little bit about some of the advocacy work that we've done to expand access and increase opportunity um, and, and really affordability of higher education, especially for our aspiring teachers of color. So uh, we'll share some details about the impact of the MTI scholarship why we chose to advocate for this scholarship and increases in investments to that. Joined by uh, Dr. Miguel Salcedo from the Chicago Public School District. Um, he'll share some details about the work that they're doing around ensuring access to the um, educator pipeline, increasing access and opportunity for students of color. Again, targeted to ensuring that we close the gaps in uh, what we know is that there's a very diverse student population and the teachers are not necessarily reflecting that right now. So this is one of the ways that we're working on closing that gap. Not the only way, so Mercedes will be joining us to share more details about that. Of course, the clicker stops working. The moment I decide to transition. One second. All right, so I went over that overview. I'll actually kick it over to Mercedes. This one, hey everyone, I'm Mercedes Wentworth Nice with Advanced Illinois. Is this working? Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about why the. Um, so just to start with some sort of grounding facts, um, we know that teachers make a difference. And everyone in this room can think of a teacher in their life um, or in their. in school factor impacting student success. So having a quality teacher at the front of the classroom makes a serious difference in students' academic outcomes um, and beyond. Um, that diversity um, among this tour all students, but particularly for students of color. Um, so we know not only having a teacher, but having teachers that reflect the racial diversity of of students in a classroom makes, again, a big difference for student outcomes and student success. And finally, we know that turnover in schools um, and inability to fill um, vacant um, on all students in a school and um, in Illinois, while we are growing our educator, really exciting, and we're also diversifying our workforce. Um, which is great, is still kind of failing to actually provide a fully certified teacher um, for every student in the state. Um, and so on the left here is a map showing vacancy rates for teaching positions. Um, some recently updated data from the State Board of Education on unfilled positions in all districts across the state. Um, and overall districts reported over 3,500 unfilled teaching positions in the fall of this year, of this school year. Um, that's about 2.6 of all teaching positions. Um, the challenge isn't or have no unfilled teaching positions that they've reported this year. They disproportionately serve students from low income backgrounds. They're also disproportionately urban um, as well as rural. Your districts in the state. I also want to talk about racial diversity. We talked about how racial Illinois' public teacher workforce has for a very long time not been even close to being racially representative. Of 83% of our public school teachers are white. And again, while we are increasing the racial diversity in our workforce, Important progress about um, the particular location of these shortages. Um, the chart on the right shows you kind of what I just talked about, which is that for mostly students of color. Um, you can see the orange bars show you teaching vacancy rates in majority white districts versus majority districts serving majority students of color. Same thing with districts serving majority um, low income or non low income um, communities. for um, several years and continues to be true. Bilingual education have the biggest teacher shortage in our school. 
um, you can see the next, you know, most um, highest vacancy rate is among PE teachers, and it's almost half of um, the vacancy rate of special ed teachers. This chart, because it's going to be relevant to the Minority Teachers Illinois scholarship. But also, I want to talk about bilingual education has a really high proportion of who are using the transitional bilingual educator license, which allows people to teach for five years without certification, um, which is a great way you know, to get people into bilingual classrooms. Um, but that's to say that this number of unfilled positions actually kind of understates the teacher shortage in bilingual education because so many, I think it's um, close to 13%. and we need more diverse teachers. And we know that affordability is one major barrier um, to access. In How much this chart shows has gone up astronomically in the last decade. And Latinx students, college students in particular, this were and have a harder time paying them off because they were so debt is a barrier to lots and lots of students across the state barrier um, to our teachers of color who we sorely need. Um, I also want to name that affordability is just one kind of barrier um, to both entering the teaching profession. Um, so we can talk a little bit more about that in the Q&A. Major barrier, but it's just sort of my the minority scholarship and other affordability scholarships are the kind of lever that we need to be pushing on um, to address some of these issues with unfilled positions. Minority Teachers of Illinois scholarship. Um, this scholarship invests in firing teachers of education by providing um, scholarships of up to 7500 per year um, while students are in their educator preparation program. Illinois. Um, eligible candidates, students, as well as graduate students, I mean, also include teachers who are getting subsequent endorsements, who, who are um, based on financial need and only provide scholarships up to um, students, you know, tuition. And then also has set aside for two priority areas, one being male candidates. We know male teachers of color are extremely underrepresented. Then the other thing for bilingual candidates, um, and those bilingual candidates um, can go on to earn. The scholarship are required to teach in racially diverse or in the case of bilingual applicants, um, linguistically um, for the number of years that they've been funded. So are committed to um, not only teaching in Illinois in Illinois schools, but to teaching in racially diverse schools. More about uh, linked on this slide. In 2021, um, we actually changed or passed a series of changes to the scholarship that we want to talk a little bit about today that are really exciting and have made it just a lot more. Um, the first being prioritization of candidates based on financial need. Previously, it was just sort of on a rolling basis, not necessarily benefit students with the most financial need. Um, we increased the maximum. It's earlier how much the cost of college has increased. So we know, of course, you know, 5,000 is just not. Um, we also introduced a requirement that EPPs, um, students who are receiving this scholarship, um, have to provide advising to those candidates, and that ed prep programs also have to provide uh, information sessions on MTI to the spread the scholarship opportunity. Um, we expanded eligibility to include so cur current or pre Candidate to be out to um, 
for the college and career endorsement in education before they even enroll in an EPP because they've already they are interested and committed to you know the professional. We also added that 30% set aside for bilingual candidates of color um, and increased the set aside for male candidates. So it was like a huge set of changes to the scholarship that I think mostly haven't really been touched for several decades um, that are actually all being implemented for the first time this school year. So, you know, what impact they're having, how they're working, um, but we're really excited to see the scholarship again become much more targeted. Um, So for a long time, um, MTI has been funded at just a couple million per year. For about five years, um, it was funded at 1.9 million, which allowed it to only serve about. Because, you know, each candidate makes a difference. Candidates. Um, last year, we increased, we to 4.2 million, which was actually needed to pick in some of the changes in legislation. Um, an increase in award amounts. Um, but this year we're recommending an increase um, of 2.8 million for a total of 7 million in MTI. Um, this will allow every person who applies to the scholarship who's eligible to actually receive an award. And we actually go in the next two years. So we're hoping actually. Uh, but based on the most recent data we have, this will the scholarship, at least for now, um, it would allow MTI to serve over 900 candidates, almost at 1,000. So talk a little bit about our advocacy in this case. Yeah. So uh, to Mercedes's point, as you saw in the previous graph, this is the great thing about having a quick is, uh, is that last year, the General Assembly appropriated the most they've ever appropriated for the MTI scholarship. That does mean that more students were eligible to get the scholarship, right? More students received it and they're actually getting some supports that they've never received before that I'm really excited to see a little bit more about. But all this right here, that 4.2 million took two years of advocacy and two years of building a powerful base of partners, of coalition members, advocacy team is what we call it, of institutions, nonprofit organizations, community-based organizations, faith-based civil rights, really just a diverse group of stakeholders that came together to make sure that the General Assembly could not ignore this investment. There's another reality, right, that when we think about community organizing terms, there was an open opportunity window. The reality is that we're experiencing a teacher shortage in the state of Illinois, really in the entire country. And then we're also noticing that the population of students is growing in its diversity and the population of teachers was not reflecting that. This uh, scholarship is a really great opportunity to increase access to that, uh, to that uh, pipeline, right, to go into teaching, but it also is a way to increase affordability for people as higher education is growing in its uh, expensiveness in the state of Illinois, also again in the entire country. We had an opportunity and we needed to take advantage of that. Loss and a huge one last year. We came together to advocate to ensure that legislators um, prioritize this investment. But it all started with focus groups with students, right? We wanted to hear directly from the students that are receiving this scholarship why it's important that we fund it, why it's important that we increase those investments because they depend on this money to uh, fund their last year before student teaching, or I mean, during their student teaching time, as you all know, those of you that are familiar with the teacher, um, the pathway, they need to go through student teaching and are not actually able to work because they're full-time in a classroom usually. So this makes a difference. Uh, we also heard from them that it made the difference between taking out an additional loan, right? And just using money that's provided by the state and uh, by the federal government. So it made a huge difference there. Uh, we convened partners, allies, and supporters to strategize and engage in advocacy, really making sure that the governor, the legislator supported this increase in investment. Uh, we met with legislators and other decision makers we shared testimony at hearings, including uh, with the Illinois Student Assistance Commission to encourage them to prioritize this investment in their budget request, the Illinois Board of Higher Education and the General Assembly. So you'll see that it takes a lot of steps actually to get something passed. And it took us two years, right, to get that win. 
Uh, we also do something as simple as sending letters to the governor and to the legislators to make sure that they prioritize this investment. Uh, we raised awareness. A lot of this is, you know, when we talk to the people that are in our coalition or what we call our advocacy team, we hear from people at the institutions that some of the students don't even know that the scholarship exists. So how do we raise awareness that the students know that this money is available to them? Because then if it's going to make the difference between them taking out an additional loan or not, we want to make sure that they know that they're eligible for this, especially as we increase those investments in the scholarship. We want to make sure that the entire money that is allocated is utilized. We don't want any money left over at the end of the year. Um, the, the good thing is that within the legislative changes, we actually advocated for some of that money to be dedicated to uh, recruiting and supporting Black male candidates. So the money's going to get utilized regardless, but the reality is that if we are able to put it into scholarships, we want to get, we wanted to get that money directly to the students, right? Uh, we do social media. So those of you that are active on social media, uh, if you use Twitter, we use Twitter uh, during legislative sessions to make sure that the legislators know. Uh, you know, one of the things about legislators is that they want to look good, right? They don't want to look bad and they want to show support. So let's encourage them and pressure them, some positive pressure to make sure that they keep this at the top of their mind and that they even know that the scholarship exists. Uh, and then we, you know, continue our efforts. We've been convening for the last two years. We convened even before the, the uh, bill was passed. And now we are asking for more money. So this year we're asking for $7 million, which will uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, fund every eligible candidate for the scholarship, which is great, right? Uh, but again, so much of that requires us to make sure that we're raising awareness so that the students don't scholarship, especially our male candidates of color, um, because there's a set aside that goes directly to them. And we wanna make sure that, again, if money is tailored to those students, that it goes directly to them and that they know about it. Uh, and I say, I emphasize that point because you know, tomorrow I have a, a student that is going into the, um, he wants to be a gym teacher after college. And uh, if it wasn't for a focus group that we had done last year uh, with Miguel actually at NEIU, he wouldn't have known that the MTI scholarship existed. So he didn't apply last year, but he's applying this year and hopefully he's gonna get that money, right? But that, the reality is that he's not, he's one student out of many that still don't know about the resources that are available to them. And we wanna make sure that you know, those of you that are wearing your district hat or uh, you're at an institution that we're giving the students information that they need, 